Welcome back to Singapore tonight. Researchers from Duke and U.S. Medical School and the National Heart Center Singapore have found a way to possibly treat fatty liver disease, a condition that affects about one in four worldwide and is common in Singapore. Well, researchers found that by deactivating a specific protein called interleukin-11 by using therapeutic antibodies, they could reverse the effects of the disease, such as inflammation and scarring of the liver. And for more, we're joined by one of the authors of this study, Assistant Professor Sebastian Schaefer from Duke NUS Medical School and National Heart Center Singapore. He's also co-founder of Enleofen Bio, the biotech company that partnered researchers for this study. Sebastian Thanks very much for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, break it down in layman terms. How would this potential treatment work? Yeah, so as you already mentioned, so this is the result of really a breakthrough story that has been uh, years in the making from uh, scientists from Duke NUS Medical School, the National Heart Center Singapore, and also in Neofen Bio. And um, what we found there was that there is a certain protein called interleukin-11 or I11 that is very abundant in the liver of patients that suffer from um, fatty liver disease. And when we looked into this in a bit more detail, we realized that certain parts of the liver would secrete this protein. Uh, there would be some crosstalk in the liver between different parts, different cells, and that actually these effects are very negative. So uh, this protein actually causes some parts of the liver to get activated and to form scars, uh, which uh, is scarring of the tissue, which we refer to as fibrosis, whereas other parts of the liver would actually get shut down, and this would have a really bad effect on uh, the liver function. So the whole idea of this treatment is that one has to block or neutralize um, this protein so that we can cure the disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you know, your study actually focuses on a specific untreatable type of um, the fatty liver disease. Now, it's called the non-alcoholic statuatic hepatitis. I hope I got that right. And <laughs> well, otherwise known as NASH. So yes. why did you um, choose to focus on NASH? So NASH, it's a... Uh, a very um, advanced form of fatty liver disease and it's already quite severe and as you mentioned already before it's a huge problem because one in four in the world has, uh, is suffering from fatty liver disease and there's currently no treatment options available. There have been some, uh, uh, some clinical trials but those have failed so it's a huge unmet um, medical uh, clinical need uh, and that's why we focused our um, studies on this specific type of fatty liver disease. It can be caused by eating, let's say, very fatty foods or drinking mm -hmm. very um, sugary um, drinks. And if it's untreated, it can actually progress uh, to get uh, to liver cancer and actually also liver failure, which you can only treat when you have a liver transplantation. Mm -hmm. So that's why we focused um, on this specific uh, uh, disease. And when we then uh, took the results from our initial experiments and started to design drugs to specifically bind to this protein 11 and, and neutralize it, we found that this has a huge um, beneficial effect mm -hmm. on, on the disease. Uh, and this, of course, uh, was very exciting. So uh, we went on and uh, uh, tested these uh, drugs, which we call therapeutic antibodies. And um, we now try to translate these um, findings from our university, from, uh, from the lab, and to bring it to the patients. And that's why we founded Enleofen, which is a very um, lean, acid-centric biotech that uh, is focused specifically on only producing these antibodies and make them uh, usable in humans. Let me just uh, clarify uh, for a bit. Uh, when you talk about NASH, is that something that's very... Uh, would you say Singaporeans are especially predisposed to NASH uh, as opposed to the alcoholic version? Because you mentioned sugary drinks, uh, fatty diets. Mm. That sounds like something that Singaporeans... Uh, um, you know, it's, it's part of our it's part diet. Of the diet, exactly. Well, it's uh, not all the laxa's fault. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, there is a genetic makeup in uh, in Asia that predisposes the people here to uh, to metabolic diseases, which uh, could be uh, fatty liver disease. It could be uh, also diabetes. These things often go hand in hand, and so I think because we don't fully understand yet why this is the case. This is very complex and there's going to be many genes that interact with your diet, with the environment. And uh, so I think it is specifically for the people here, I think, uh, the study has a lot of um, impact. It has a lot of benefits, you know, but then you, it's a clinical trial. Were there any side effects to this? And, you know, and what were some of the side effects? I think it's a really good um, question because actually almost all treatments do have some sort of side effect. But um, we are quite optimistic because um, we think 
uh, this protein I, uh, I11 is uh, actually a very ancient protein. It arose in the fish about 450 million years ago. And uh, to, for us, uh, at least uh, in our um, studies, we cannot see that it has really an impact on health. So in health, it's actually shut down and we don't have it. Uh, this ancient process is still inside of us and these diseases like the fatty liver disease hijack this protein to uh, cause these very adverse effects. Uh, what is really interesting is that there are actually individuals who have a genetic mutation which is very rare, which completely shut off this protein and they are completely fine. Mm. So they don't have cancers, they don't have inflammation, they actually have a normal lifespan and that is a very good indication that we can actually neutralize and block this protein without is expecting severe side effects. All right. Well, you know, your research indeed sounds very exciting and, you know, good luck on this. We've been speaking to Sebastian Schaefer, the assistant professor at Duke NUS Medical School and National Heart Center Singapore and co-founder of Endiofant Bio.